leads you in your obedience, it will always produce blessings and fruit in your life. Read. Amen. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And when they saw him, some worshipped, they worshipped, but some doubted. Uh huh. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, All power mm -hmm. given unto me in heaven and in earth. All power, all power, all power is, all power is. Not all power will be, but all power is mm -hmm. given unto me in heaven and in earth. Hallelujah. All authority is mine. Yes. I have the authority to do all things. Amen. I have the enabling grace to give to you that you will be able to do all that I tell you to do. Uh huh. Amen. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Go ye therefore and teach. Go ye therefore and teach. Go ye therefore and do as you've seen me do. Go ye therefore and do as you have been a part of my earthly ministry. You've seen me do it. Now, you are to be imitators of me. So go ye therefore and teach. Uh huh. All nations. Mm -hmm. Baptizing them in the name of the Father. Baptizing them in the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Ghost. And of the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, mm -hmm. even unto the ends of the world. So now we see Jesus commissioning these men getting them ready to go and do exactly what he has said that they are to do. Luke 24, please. In verse number twenty four forty nine. And behold, I send the promise of the Father upon you. And behold, I sin, I sin, I sin the promise, I sin the promise. That which was promised in the word of God under the old covenant and even talked to you in my ministry, I am going to send this promise unto you. Uh huh. Um, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem. But tarry in the city of Jerusalem. Wait there. Wait in the city of Jerusalem until this promise is fulfilled. Don't go by Jerusalem, but stay there. Wait there. Remain there until the promise has been fulfilled unto you. Uh huh. Until you be endued with power from on high. Until you be endued with power from on high. And he led them out as far as Bethany and lifted up his hands and blessed them. Yes. Hallelujah. And while they came to pass, he blessed them. He parted from them and, and carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Amen. Continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1 and verse number 1. Let's start verse number 1. The former trees have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach, uh -huh. until the day in which he was taken up, after that, after that, he who 
through the Holy Ghost had given commandment unto the apostles whom he had chosen, mm -hmm. to whom also he showed himself self alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, commanded. And being assembled together with them. Uh-huh. Now, Jesus had met them. Jesus had met them in Jerusalem where he told them to go. Uh-huh. Commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, mm -hmm. but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, Ye have heard of me. But, but wait for the promise of the Father. Wait for the promise. Wait for the promise. Of the Father, which said, He, ye have heard of me. Holy Ghost speaking. Read it. For John truly baptized with water, mm -hmm. but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. For John baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Sunday school lesson. Amen. Amen. The power, new power, to proclaim the truth. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. They were all with one accord in one place. Amen. Unity, unity, unity. Things happen, the miraculous happen when we get unified in the body of Christ. When we are of one mind, of one heart, and one spirit, yes. the Spirit of God can do mighty things in our midst. Yes. If we could just get on one accord, yes. if we could just get on one accord, we can experience, hallelujah, a move of God just as they experienced on this day. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly, and suddenly, they had expectation. They had expectation that Jesus would do just what he said he would do. Now, they didn't have an understanding totally of what was going to happen or even how it was going to happen. But they just knew that Jesus was alive, and they knew that Jesus never lied to them. They had a remembrance, hallelujah, that when Jesus was teaching, and the people were about to faint, and he looked about, and he saw so many people, and he said, uh, how much money we got? And they said, well, we, ain't, we ain't got enough money to feed all these people. <laughs> and uh, there was a little lad that, that had a little lunch. Mm -hmm. And they remember that Jesus said, bring it to me. And then he instructed those disciples to, to set them down by fifties. And Jesus lifted up that little lunch and blessed it, and he fed above five thousand men and women and children. So they already knew that Jesus was not a man that he should lie. Amen. They had already seen Jesus perform many mighty miracles. So they knew that they could trust what Jesus said. Yeah. Why is it that in this day we have a lack of trusting what God says? Yeah. Just because we've not seen it happen in our lives personally, everything, but if it's written in the Word of God, it's true. Mm -hmm. So we need to embrace the truth of God's Word that we might receive the miraculous in our lives. Mm -hmm. and, come on. <laughs> but as Elder was speaking, you know, I was so reminded of, you know, that stay put, you know, um, until God says differently, you know. Stay where God has placed you. Um, don't move so suddenly or so, or don't be moved by, move so easily by, because things are not moving in the time span we think they should, because he told them, stay in Jerusalem. You know, stay there. That's where the promise is going to come. That's where, you know, that what I have spoken is going to come. So if you're not there, you won't receive what I have set for you to receive. Uh, they were on one accord and in one place. So when he told them back in Luke 24 to go, 
to, you know, to go to Jerusalem and remain there. And he even also told them in that same chapter, uh, Luke 24, in regards to going, um, that it will begin at Jerusalem. That, you know, the promise that, you know, and that they will be witnesses, but it was going to begin at Jerusalem. He didn't say it was going to begin somewhere else. You know, he said he was going to go into all the world and preach, you know, the gospel, but he said it was going to begin at Jerusalem. Amen. So they had to remain in place where God had set for them to remain, to receive the promise. A lot of times we try to get ahead of God and try to do our own thing to try to make the promise come to pass right. and mess up things, and then we got to fall back in line um, to try to figure out, okay, God, have your way now. You know, I don't mess it up, but it not, now, God, you have your way. So it let us see that one accord and that one mind of being in the set place that God has, you know, said that this is where your this is where your blessing is going to be. Yeah. This is where I'm I'm I'm, I'm sending. This is where I'm going to birth you in, into going into the nation. Yeah. But I need you to stay put. I need you to stay in place. Yeah. Don't move so easily. Don't move so quickly. So I can I really was blessed when Elder was talking about Forrest that they were actually where God wanted them to be, to receive the promise, and then suddenly. Once that mindset of, okay, we, we remain, and it doesn't talk about how the span time of when Jesus spoke those words to them of Terry here in Jerusalem, to the time it happened, but they were in the right place at the right time to receive the promise. Amen. And one thing I want to take note of, they were not just sitting around. They were not just uh, have idle talk going on. But they were there praising and worshiping God. Praising and worshiping God for what he had already done with expectation of what he was about to do. That's how they were on one accord. They were on one accord in praising and worshiping God. Their desire was to be pleasing and acceptable unto the Lord. What about you? What about us? Do we have that desire to be pleasing and acceptable unto the Lord? What is our attitude when we come into the local assembly hall? What is our attitude when we come in here? Is our attitude to praise? And to worship God collectively with our brothers and our sisters that we might receive a word from the Lord, an in-season word, hallelujah, a prophetic word for our lives. God will speak. God will do many mighty things when we're on one accord. But the one accordness must be in the spirit. Amen. Worshiping and praising God has nothing to do with how you feel. Amen. That's right. Worshiping and praising God should have nothing to do with where you are presently in your life. Amen. Amen. Your house may be in foreclosure. They might have just picked up your car this morning Amen. and you got a ride to church. But our attitude should be that I'm going to church, I'm going to praise, and I'm going to worship God. The reason why I'm going to do that, because God knows all things. Yeah, yeah. He's the one that owns everything. Yeah. The silver and the gold belongs to him. The cattle on a thousand hill belong to him. I belong to him. And he's promised that he will supply all of my need according yeah. to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. No matter what you've gone through, the attitude when we walk in these doors is I'm going to give God some praise. Amen. I don't care who else don't give God no praise, but I'm going to praise Amen. him. I don't care who don't worship God, I'm going to worship him. Why? Because it's an individual thing. Yes. This is a personal relationship with God. Amen. And the reason why we can't all get on, one of the reasons why we all can't get on one accord in praising and worshiping God is because all of us don't have the same relationship with God. Amen. We should because it's available to us. Yeah. But we have something to do with the with the growth of our relationship in God. Amen. It's the reading and the meditating of his word and giving him what belongs to him. Amen. Amen. Verse number three. And there appealed unto them clothing tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. 
Amen. Fire, fire, fire is a purifier. It's a refiner. Amen. Fire, fire, fire. And when I thought about that fire, it, I thought about Isaiah. Hallelujah. How Isaiah, he was a prophet. Amen. He was already a prophet. But before he could do and begin to do prophesy as the Lord would give him utterance, mm -hmm. he realized some things that he was a man of unclean lips. Mm -hmm. That he needed that he needed a thorough cleansing. Yes. He needed a thorough purifying. Yes. Just like just like us, just Amen. like us. Hallelujah. Amen. We come short. We we are in the body of Christ. We Amen. have titles and all of that. But we need to be refined. Amen. We need to be purified Amen. that we can thoroughly be used by God, and we know the truth of the teaching how Isaiah was cleaned up by God. An mm -hmm. angel came and took a hot coal off the altar mm -hmm. and cleaned his mouth up. Mm -hmm. So God, with this fire, the fire of the Holy Ghost that fell on these men, mm -hmm. amen, he's giving them not only the authority, but the enabling grace mm -hmm. to go forth and do what God has ordained for them to do. Mm -hmm. He says, and when they were filled with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, Filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Another comforter. One just like Jesus. That's that's a holy the comforter is another word for the Holy Ghost. Amen. He is a comforter. Amen. One just like Jesus. Jesus said, I'm not gonna leave you alone. Amen. He says, I'm not going to leave you alone. He said, but I'm going to send you another just like myself. I won't be here in the physical, but I will be here with you and in you in the spirit because I go back to my Father. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Speaking with the Spirit as the Spirit. Speaking in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Amen. Come on, let's get some feedback here. Pastor Tar, come on, give us something on that verse right there. <laughs> At this time, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And when they was all in this um in the um in this one place together. And the Spirit of God, you know, came in. In verse 3, it talks about how um, there appealed unto them cloven tongues like a fi like as a fire, and it sat upon each, each of them. But uh, as it sat upon each of them, they all began to speak in tongues as the Spirit of God gave them utterance. And when talking about speaking in tongues, talking about a, 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 a dialect of a different language, as the Spirit of God gave them um, utterance. So they spoke in this other language. Um, it was all by the Spirit of God. It was a, a different type of language other than their own. So it was it had to be the Spirit of God because it was a language that they didn't normally speak in. And you know what God, you know, in all things, there's a purpose and a plan, you know, why he do things the way he do things and the timing that he do things and the way he do things. So when we talk about the Pentecost, this is dealing with the Pentecost, of, it's a feast happening around this time. Mm -hmm. So you got many people, many Jews from different nationalities and nations coming in at this time. Right. So... God chose the, 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 the opportune time. There's a whole harvest out there. Mm -hmm. And this is the time, you know, Pentecost meeting harvest. Mm -hmm. You know, bring in the fruit, the first fruit. And the first and the first uh, week and some of the weeks of, of, of days. Yeah. So it lets us see that God's timing, you know, mm -hmm. and the way he does things. See, a lot of times we try to pinpoint how God's going to move, when God's going to move. But it lets us see that at the time that when when the individuals, those that were in, they say in the upper room, when they actually spoke these things, speaking in a, another man's language other than their own, it was a purpose and a plan even for that too. Mm -hmm. It not only um, blessed the ones that received it, that came upon them, but it, it blessed the whole atmosphere. It changed the whole atmosphere. So it lets us see that when God sets things up and when we have a personal encounter, personal encounter with, with Christ, it's amazing because 
even with them seeing Christ raised from the dead and seeing that he was taken up into glory, and he's telling me to wait until, because uh, I'm going to send something else, you are the greater. You know, so I'm going to Jerusalem to see what this else you're going to send me, so that, ex that high expectation of, Lord, what next can you do for me? What, what more can you do for me? You done done this, what more? And then a lot of times when we get into that worship, yeah. get into that, you know, in, in, in allowing the glory of God to come down, and it's like, okay, I want to stay in that state. I want to remain in that state. The, the anointing of God is really blessing and strengthening. So they actually had that, that great expectation of, okay, we done seen all of this, these miracles, and seeing Christ raised from the dead. He said, you're going to send us something else? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stay put because I, I want what God got for me. Mm -hmm. And so it just really was a blessing that, you know, how God orchestrated the whole timing yeah. of, of when this was, when the Holy Ghost was going to come down because he had more to reach than them. He had more to reach than just the, the ones that he told to remain in Jerusalem. But, and it, as we go on, we're going to see how, you know, it all unfolded. And I just want to share, um, as, as you stop talking, you said in the opportune time, that God already knew the people that was going to be there. And it's so, and what I thought about, because I thought about it back on the funeral yesterday, when you said that opportune time, God already knew the sinners that were going to be in the midst of that. But sometimes we have to get out of tradition what we so used to how to perform in funerals right. and let the Holy Spirit take over. Right. Because he knows who in there needs to be reached. Right. And if we allow the Spirit of God to mm -hmm. do it, because the Spirit of God is the one that was going to reach these people in Jerusalem, because God already knew who was going to be in right. the midst right. and who right. need to be touched, you know, who eyes need to be opened, right. you know. So that's the um, frame of mind that we have to walk in as believers to um, yield to the Spirit of God, yield to the Holy Spirit, because He's the one that's going to give us power mm -hmm. to utter the things of God, the truth of the Word of God, and it's going to reach the hearts of sinners that it can be changed, and that's our ultimate goal, is to reach sinners. Amen. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Alright, moving right along for the sake of time. Um, Let's see, verse, verse 5. Verse, um, somebody read, go ahead and read um, verse 5 through 13. Just really, and then we'll just close it all in together. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noise abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in their own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, how not, are not all these which speak Galileans? That's a question. Mm -hmm. And how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we are born, wherein we were born? Mm -hmm. Now I can't pronounce that word. Parthian. Who? Parthian. Parthians and me and Elamite, Elamite mm -hmm. and the dwellers at Mesopotamia, mm -hmm. Mesopotamia mm -hmm. and in Jerusalem and Cappadocia. Judea. Did you say Jerusalem or Judea? Ju oh, Judea. Uh, okay. Judea. Right. And Cappadocia and Pontus and in Asia. Okay, I type this other one. And Phrygia. Who? Phrygia. Phrygia. And Pamphylia. And in Egypt. <laughs> and in the parts of Libya. About the Syrian. Mm -hmm. And strangers of Rome. Jews and proselytes. Creeds and Arabians. We do hear them speak in our tongues. The wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Other mocking, saying, These men are full of new wine. Okay, and remember when we dealt with Luke uh, 24, and when um, in verse 47, it say, And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached 
in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And uh, and dropping down to 49, and behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye here in the city of Jerusalem until you be endured with power from on high. And so it just lets us see that the promise that God said that he was going to set forth and the place that God said that he was going to set for your blessing is here mm -hmm. in Jerusalem. So I need you to tarry. But he, he mentioned about that for its beginning at Jerusalem, but it says that it will be to the nation. Uh -huh. So look at the situation in the, the, the Feast of the Harvest, the, Pente the, the Pentecost time mm -hmm. of the season, that everybody from all different nations coming in, the Jews coming in to uh, for this Feast of Harvest to bring in their gifts. Mm -hmm. And what God is seeing, okay, now, and that's the thing about we have to realize about Sometimes we think we got to the, the, the reach the masses, but if you can just reach the one and the one go, mm -hmm. you know, then it's like, you know, you, you don't witness to somebody from Texas, and they're going back to Texas, and they're going to tell somebody, and, it, and it's just a domino effect. Mm -hmm. So look at how God orchestrated the place and the timing that the Holy Spirit will come upon the chosen that he had set it for, but look how it, it, it surrounded and it touched the many nations. They're seeing something that has never has happened before. They're hearing something that has never happened before. So it's just the miracle of itself has taken place and it has caught the attention of the nation. You know, it, it, it has caught the attention of the nation and it's just really a blessing how God, like I said, how God orchestrated the, the, the coming of the Holy Ghost in order to bless a few for a few to bless a nation. Amen. Amen. Somebody go with me to Exodus, the book of Exodus. Amen. That we might bring just a little more clarity to uh, to this time that we're experiencing in this lesson. Exodus chapter 23, and verse number 14. Three times thou shalt keep a feast unto me in the year. Three times, three times thou shalt keep a feast unto me in the year. So there are three times a year that God had said his people should come together and keep a feast. Amen. They had different feasts that they observed. But there were three times that they were all supposed to come together in one place. Yeah. And that one place is here in Jerusalem. Amen. Three feasts, three feasts, three feasts, three. Thou shalt keep the feast of unleavened bread. Uh huh. Thou shalt eat unleavened bread seven days, as I commanded thee, in the time appointed of the month Abbot. Okay. I did. For in it thou camest out from Egypt, and none shall appear before me empty. The feast of harvest, the first fruits of thy labors, which thou hast sown in the field, and the first and the feast of ingathering, which is in the end of the year, when thou hast gathered in the labors of the field, out of the field. Three times in the year all thy males shall appear before the Lord God. Amen. Amen. Three times a year. Three times a year. Deuteronomy 16. Verse number 16. Three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose, in the feast of unleavened bread. In the place where God will choose. It's not of man's choosing. Mm -hmm. It's not up to us to offer God what we want to offer God mm -hmm. or to God offer God where we want, want to offer it to him. Mm -hmm. But whatever God says, I want it, that's what you do. Mm -hmm. Whatever God says, bring 
That's what we are instructed to do. There is a blessing in being obedient to what God has said. Amen. Partial obedience is disobedience. Yes. Just to do part of it and leave the other undone, we really have not obeyed God. Read in the Feast of Unleavened Bread, mm -hmm. in the Feast of Weeks, and in the Feast of the Tabernacle. And they shall not appear before the Lord empty. Mm -hmm. Every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessing of the Lord thy God, which he hath given thee. Amen. They were not only instructed to come, but they couldn't come empty-handed. Mm -hmm. They could not come empty-handed. Amen. They had to bring an offering unto the Lord. Our attitude should be, man, I should all want to come to church today with nothing. I know it's not about money. Some some people, they, you know, make it about money and all of that. But you know what? We should not only offer God our time and our talents, but if we offer that to him, we should freely offer him our finances as well. Because he is the one that gives us the seed to sow. Amen. That we might have bread to eat. But we see these people, they come together in this feast. They're here now. And remember, think about, think about this. They were all scattered abroad. Before this time, they were all scattered abroad as a, as a result of their disobedience. When they were carried away captive by Nebuchadnezzar, they were scattered throughout all of the world. Okay? So now, they are Jews. They are Jews, but whatever they are, they begin to speak the language in which where they were. So now these people, they're here at this feast, and they're seeing, they are seeing the Holy Ghost fall on one another, filling them with the Holy Ghost, and they begin to speak with other tongues. They begin to speak in their own language. They begin to speak in the language that they spoke in or wherever they were from. And them praising and glorifying God, they were doing it in that language. So other people that were around that from those regions, they begin to hear that. And they say, hey, wait a minute. Something different is going on here. They are speaking our language, but they're Galileans. Mm -hmm. they're, from, they're from this region. They don't even know the language from where we come from. But they saw them speaking in that language, heard them speaking in that language, praising and glorifying God, ministering not only to God, but ministering to those others that were around that heard them. Amen. And what I get a blessing out of, even with uh, speaking about the harvest, bringing something to, they were bringing something to God. They were bringing sacrifices to God. They were bringing the first fruits of, of, of all their increase to God. And God turned it around. You bring it, you bringing me something. Now I'm turning it around and getting ready to bring you something. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just the blessing of, you know, the sincerity of how God just really, God will not leave us in the same state that we're in. Yeah. You know, when we have our mindset on praising and worshiping and serving God out of a pure heart and doing what the thing, doing the things that God has set for us to do, He's gonna bless us. We're in covenant relationship with God. He's gonna take care. I never seen the righteous forsaken nor see begging bread. He's gonna let us know that hey, I I'm covering you. Mm -hmm. And so as we worship God and and, and, and give ourselves over to God God showers down upon us with blessings, even um, uh, spiritual and materialistic. So we have to realize that, you know, in this situation where God, you know, had this mass of people that was bringing, you know, that was coming together, even with them coming together on one accord, you know, to uh, to worship and to, to set forth a, something that he had decreed years, years ago. And they were still yet going forth and doing the feast. But now look at what God getting ready to do for them. To bless them with a power that no man has ever witnessed or experienced before. The indwelling of the Holy Ghost. Something that is a part of him that he's getting ready to place within each and every one of them that will receive and believe. So it's just really a blessing how... 
you know, as we present ourselves to God, God blesses and turns around and says, well, I and my Father is going to dwell in you. Amen, amen. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, what meaneth this? Others mocking said, these men are full of new wine. They were saying it without an understanding, probably sarcastically, but they were filled with new wine. Amen. They had the wine of the Spirit, that new wine, that new wine. Hallelujah. That no man could make. No man could crush them kind of grapes. No man could add to those those, those grapes, that, 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 that wine there, the new wine. And as God has made this new wine available to us today, we should seek to be filled with this new wine on a daily basis. Amen. Because surely if you pour out, you do need to be refilled. Amen. Amen. Come on up, Pastor Tar, and throw this out. Amen. Thank God for this wonderful lesson this morning. I thought Elder Green was going to read on down when Peter stood up and acknowledged. You going to go there? Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> We fill in um, Acts, the second chapter, verses 14. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, looked up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell in at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Amen. So right here, he had to bring them back to remembrance of the prophecy that was spoken by Joel. So apparently, they already knew about this prophecy. So he let them know they are not drinking with wine. What you are seeing and experiencing is something that was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, mm -hmm. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. So he began to let them know what Joel prophesied. Mm -hmm. This is what is happening. This is what coming to pass and taking place. So these men are not drunk with wine as they supposed in their thoughts. But yet, the Holy Spirit has come, and God has promised. Amen? And on my servants and on my handmaidens will I, pour, will I pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And say, on my who? My, on my, my servants and my what? And on my handmaidens. And I will pour out of those days in, of my spirit. And they shall prophesy. So he said, on his servants and his handmaids. So God is not going to make a person. He has to fill everybody with his spirit. And, and, and with, with the purpose of him filling us with his spirit is that we go forth and speak the truth of God's word. Amen. 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 So God has no respect to person. It's not one gender he after to um, proclaim the gospel. He wants all of us to proclaim the gospel. Once we receive uh, Christ, in our life as our Lord and our Savior, and, and receive the Spirit of God, which have come to endure us with power to go forth and speak the truth of the Word of God, that is what we're supposed to be doing. Every believer, by the Spirit of God, as He give us utterance. Amen? Amen. And one other thing I wanted to um, bring out with um, Elder Green and um, Nelson Anthony was up talking about how, you know, how sometimes, you know, God can give us a word, and He can tell God can give us a prophecy, per se, and say, okay, I'm going to give you a word to the nation. Mm -hmm. But sometimes in our minds that we think, okay, God will send me to this nation, that nation, mm -hmm. this nation here. But God can give you one camp meeting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One camp meeting. And have people from all around in there. Mm -hmm. yes. And then when they go back home, 
Right. That's the word to the nation. Yeah. But they don't care yeah. that word, that, they, that seed that was sown on the inside of them. They don't care back to where they came from. And it is also how God, how you know, back then, that's how the word got out. Yeah. Because there was only so many uh, uh, disciples and apostles, and of course, yes, they traveled, but people that heard the word of God from other nations and different um, uh, cities round about, yes, but they went back and they took that same word they heard the apostles and the disciples spoke, they took it back to where they came from. And that's how the word of God got out so fast. So let us be obedient and yield to the spirit of God. And, and, and speak those things that speak the truth of the word of God, those things that God has put in our spirit to speak. Amen? Amen. 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 Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, as we close this uh, Sunday school um, lesson this morning, I pray, Father, that you would continue to bless the hearts and the minds of the people of God, that you would continue to strengthen us, give us the revelation of your word, Lord God, to empower us, Lord God, to stand in boldness. We thank you for the Spirit of God, most of all, that give us power and boldness, Lord God, to speak the truth of the Word of God. And we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord God, as we uh, leave uh, this building, Lord God, Lord, we go out into the heads and the highways, and we speak those things which we have learned in this place, Lord God, and that we have received from your Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus. And we thank you, for we declare we will be a bold witness for you, Father. We will not walk into fear, Lord God. We will not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. But, Lord God, we will speak it with boldness, Lord God, and humility, Lord Jesus. That souls, Lord God, souls, souls could be won unto you. Souls could be set free and delivered in the name of Jesus. We give you all glory and honor and the praise, Lord God, that it all belongs to you, Father. And we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, Father, for dying for us, Lord God, that we can receive the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah.